Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, pro wrestling fans from all over the world of all shapes and sizes. Welcome to another pro wrestling talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. So, for this video, I'm going to be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's Windy City Riot, where history had been made last night. Going to talk about that. But first, uh, I'm going to talk about Jerry and Nagano's final two matches as part of her graduation from TJPW. Um, whew, it was hard to watch. It was definitely hard to watch. So it was TJPW Live Tour. 2024 spring that happened uh, last night and Jerry Nagato actually had two matches so she had she had the opening match and the main event so I thought it was pretty cool but in the opening match she teamed up with uh, Boca Miyamoto and Kaya Tori Bobby and they ended up taking on Yuki Aino Palm Harajuku and Shino Suzuki. Um, a match in which Jiri Nagano did get the pin on uh, Shino Suzuki, so thought that was really cool. <clears throat> and shout out to Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling for booking Moka Miyamoto versus Jiri Nagano for the main event. I think this was probably the first time that both of these ladies had wrestled in a main event, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, this was this was a very big deal, as this was Juria's final match. And both these ladies went at it. They went at it from start to finish. Um, Mocha did get the win. She did get the win. And then just... It got really emotional after the match and, you know, seeing these two ladies hug and talk with one another and then the rest of the roster showing their love for Jury Nagano. But she was part of TJPW for two years, trained by uh, Miyu Yamashita. And I know she was mostly part-time because... You know, she's also a martial artist, was also a, a movie stunt woman, and also a nurse. So, Jury has been very active, very active just in her life in general, along with pro wrestling. But, uh, and I'm also happy that, that Mocha and Jury got a chance to compete on the big stage of Grand Princess with Grand Princess 24 as a tag team and actually won. They actually won their match. They defeated Wakana Uehara and Toga. Um, and not only that, just whether they're opponents or whether they're, they're teammates, I really love the chemistry between Juri Nagano and Moka Miyamoto. Like, they have perfect chemistry. And if you ask me, I know they probably haven't had a lot of wins compared to losses. And I know they haven't had many tag title opportunities. But I still truly believe that Shinkan Kusho was one of the best tag teams. I know they haven't been able to conquer Daydream or Daisy Monkey or Toyo Mates or any of the other you know, well-known tag teams in TJPW, but I truly believe Shinkan Kusho had excellent chemistry together. I mean, they both did karate together. They had some really cool double-team moves, and, you know, they just really worked well, not only as teammates, but also as opponents as well, which, you know, they've gone against each other, you know, a handful of times, but... I tell you, it it's not going to be the same uh, with Jury and Nagano 
gone, especially in regards to Mocha Miyamoto. But the good thing is Mocha, Mocha's been getting some singles matches under her, her belt, and she's been improving and growing as a singles wrestler. So I do believe in due time, maybe months from now, years from now, I do believe in due time Mocha Miyamoto will be a champion at some point. I think it's a matter of time, but I think more and more, you know, she's only 25 years old, so I think she still has a lot ahead of her and a lot to grow on, but I really like what I've been seeing from Mocha Miyamoto, so uh, she also got a taste of the U.S. because, you know, she got a chance to wrestle uh, via MLW in the U.S., so hopefully she'll get more opportunities to travel overseas as well. But uh, I'm definitely going to miss Jiria Nagano. Um, 28 years old, but you know what? You know, sounds like she wants to pursue full-time uh, actress career, um, which it looks like she'll be doing action movies. And you know what? I hope I get a chance uh, to see some of her movies. I would, I would love to see her work. I would love to see her work. So maybe she'll get big enough and, you know, star in a movie, action movie, that'll make it over here to the States. You know? I, w I would love to see her work. And, you know, very thankful for how she serves the community um, as a nurse. You know, she's also a nurse, so... I think that's really cool. But but yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna miss her. You know, I feel like Jerry and Agano had so much potential, even as a pro wrestler. I really liked her look, I liked her style, and just I truly believe she did an excellent job during her time with TJPW. And I have to say, I, I even teared up uh, at the end of uh, her final match. And like I said, shout out to TJPW for giving her an opportunity to compete in the main event. I understand it wasn't like, you know, the biggest show or one of their main big shows. But still, Jiria got to compete in a singles match in the main event. That's a big deal. That's a big win. And not only that, she got to do it against her best tag team partner and probably may even be her best friend in Mocha Miyamoto. And I like how everybody showed love at the end. And of course, the last one to, to show love was Mocha Miyamoto. So uh, it's, it's not going to be the same for Mocha with, without Juria there by her side. But uh Jerry Nagano retired, if you ask me, too soon. But the main thing is that she's happy. You know, the main thing is that she's going to do what she wants to, to do and that she'll be happy, that she'll be fulfilling her purpose. You know, that's the main thing. You know, I know it could be tough. We don't want to see our favorites retire and, you know, go on to other things. But at the end of the day... It's about them being happy. That's what it's really about. And she felt like the time had came for her to, you know, step away and retire from uh, pro wrestling and pursue her acting career. And I'm all for it. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to greatly miss her. But as long as she's happy, I'm happy. So that's the main thing. But I just want to say thank you so much. Shinken Kusho, Mocha Miyamoto, Juria Nagano for life. Gonna really, really miss this tag team. They're, they were one of my favorite tag teams in TJPW. And, well, Mocha, it's all on you now. It's time for you to shine even more as a singles competitor. Or who knows? 
You know, maybe she'll team up more with uh, Miyu Yamashita. I mean, after all, they've teamed up before. They both do karate. So, hey, that could happen. But um, looking forward to seeing more of Moka Miyamoto as a singles wrestler. But um, Juria Nagano, thank you so much for two years of awesomeness in TJPW. Um, I enjoyed your matches. Um, I pretty much fell in love with you the moment I saw you debut in TJPW and then got a chance to look at more of your background. And you know what? I wish you all the best. God bless you. And like I said, hopefully you'll make it big on the big screen because I would love to see your work. I would love to see your movies. So best of luck. Best wishes to you. Okay, before I get into the review of Windy City Riot, here's a quick word on the sponsor for this video, Game Beauty. Check them out. As you continue to enjoy content here at Blitzball Champ Gaming, be sure you take a moment to check out Game Beauty. Beauty inspired by gaming. Game Beauty brings to you video game related makeup and cosmetic products. You have products such as eyeshadow palettes, elemental pearl highlighters, eyeshadow brushes, liquid eyeliner pens by Aki Deris, and even non-makeup products like graphic tees. They even have special collaboration makeup kits, such as this Persona 5 Heat Wave Brush Single, Metaverse Bundle, and even a Phantom Thieves Limited Edition Makeup Collection. Also remember that Game Beauty provides international shipping of $60 or more. And if you use the promo code BLITZBALLCHAMP, all in caps, you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that to your advantage. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Enjoy, and thank you. Alrighty. NJPW Strong Windy City Riot took place yesterday, April 12th, at the Wind Trust Arena in Chicago, Illinois. And we got a good handful of matches, uh, you know, a good handful of title matches as well for this show. So let's jump right on into it with our first match. All right. Started off with a singles strong survivor match. We had Matt Vandergriff versus Zane J. Uh, if you ask me, this match was way too short. It was only like three minutes and some change. I wish it could have been longer. It was very fast paced though, but uh, Matt Vandergriff gets the victory after hitting Zane J with a Styles Clash and pinning him for the one, two, three. And honestly, with it being so short, I wish they would have started the pre-show at seven instead of 7.30. I think an hour pre-show would have really given uh, this match a lot more time to shine because three minutes and some change was just way too short. Way too short. So that was a really big bummer. I wanted to see these guys cook. Cook. But Matt Vandergriff with the victory. Okay, next match. We had the ladies in action. 
tag team action. Team number one, we had Mina Shirakawa and Viva Vaughn taking on the team of Alex Windsor and Trisha Dora. I have to say, it was actually really good to see Alex Windsor again. I haven't seen Alex Windsor. Oh, man. It's been a hot minute. I think the last time I saw Alex Windsor was uh, when she competed in TJPW, which she's a former uh, International Princess Champion. But, yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've seen Alex Windsor. So it was really good, good to see her compete. And her and Trisha Dora, pretty good tag team together. Um, same thing with Mina and Viva. I thought they did well. All four of these ladies did well. But Alex Windsor with a big return victory in New Japan Pro Wrestling as she was able to pin Viva Vine after hitting her with a GTF. And then, not only that, Alex Windsor will make an appearance a little later. Stick around for that. But, uh, good, pretty good tag team match. And this was the match that actually closed out the pre-show of Windy City Riot. So this next match started off the main card. Y'all ready? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, main card. Let's go. Main card started off with a singles match. Murder Grandpa Minoru Suzuki taking on House of Torture's Ren Narita. Now, for the most part, for most of the match, Minoru Suzuki was mainly in control. Um... And that lasted for a while. Um, Ren Narita eventually started to to pick up on the offense. But, of course, you know the deal when it comes to House of Torture. There will be shenanigans. And this was no different. As with a referee distraction, Ren Narita was able to take that push-up bar and deck... Minoru Suzuki with it, and then hit him with a double cross and pinned him for the one, two, three. So, big win for Ren Narita, but like I said, shenanigans, but that's the House of Torture way. And it's just a bummer because, you know, Minoru Suzuki was pretty much in control a good 80% of the match. So, I'm just saying. But it is what it is. All right, next up, we had our first title match of the card. All righty. We had the strong women's championship on the line as Stephanie Vakir, the champion, makes her first defense against Azumi. Very big opportunity for Azumi, who had been quite busy um, during her stay in the U.S., uh, especially competing in uh, in three events, which I believe uh, she has another one coming up because she's going to be wrestling on AEW Collision against uh, Tony Storm. So technically four, <clears throat> but or actually no five because I forgot Spark. She wrestled at Spark, so. Azumi, very busy during this U.S. tour. Um, but yeah, a great showcase between both of these ladies in this match. Um, felt like Azumi did a really good job. And, you know, this match went at least 10 minutes, so I was really happy for that. Um, really went back and forth. I felt like both ladies had a good bit of momentum. But... The champ would not be denied as Stephanie Vakir was able to catch Azumi during a second uh, Torbellino attempt, or La Mystica, whichever you want to call it, and was able to transition her into a package backbreaker and then pinned her for the 1 2 3. Stephanie Vakir successful in her first defense of the strong title. 
And after the match, Alex Windsor came out. And it looks like she wants the next shot at the Strong Women's Championship. Hey, I'm down. I'm totally down. Stephanie Vakir versus Alex Windsor. I think that's going to be an excellent match. I can't wait for that. Who knows? They might go ahead and they might schedule that for resurgence in May. Yeah, I could see them doing that. I could totally see them doing that. That's when the next uh, NJPW Strong event will be resurgence in May. May 11th, I believe. So yeah, that should be really good. All right. Let's go on to our next match, our next title match. Here we go. Okay, we had a fatal four-way for the strong openweight tag team championships. As the champions, Gorillas of Destiny's El Fantasmo and Hikaleo defended against TMDK, Shane Haste, and Mikey Nichols, the team of Fred Rosser and Filthy Tom Lawler, and the West Coast Wrecking Crew of Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson. Oh, let me take a swig of coffee. Okay. This was a pretty wild match, as expected. Um, all four teams look, look pretty good. Um, honestly... This really could have gone to either of these four teams. Very action-packed. And it looked like, as it got near the end, it looked like Gorillas of Destiny was going to retain. But with the swiftness, the swiftness of TMDK and being able to interrupt and stop ELP from hitting that Thunder Kiss 86. Well, actually, I mean... Technically, he did hit it, but at the same time, Shane Haste was able to quickly get in there, pretty much get the pin like that. He got him with like a, he pinned him with like a cross-legged, what was it called? Leg lace jackknife. That's what they call it. But was able to get in there and actually roll up ELP with this leg lace jackknife for the one, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, TMDK, Shane Hayes, and Mikey Nichols are your new strong open weight tag team champions. So congratulations to them. TMDK, off to a great start. Winning gold at Windy City Riot. And then afterwards, uh, West Coast Wrecking Crew ended up beating down uh, Tom Lawler and Fred Rosser. They cut Tom Lawler's hair, shoved it in his mouth, and shoved it in Fred Rosser's mouth. So, ew. Sweaty hair. Ew. But that probably won't be the last time we see Rosser and uh, Filthy Tom Lawler team up. But it is definitely safe to say that Team Filthy is no more. So, yeah. I still would have loved for the West Coast Wrecking Crew to win this, but I'm sure they're going to continue to chase the strong tag titles. So, I think eventually they'll, they'll win, but it might just take a little bit longer. <clears throat> All right, let's go to our next match. Alrighty, next up, had a special singles match. Shota Umino versus Jack Perry. Shooter versus the Scapegoat. Now, thought it was pretty interesting that uh, Jack Perry came out with uh, security officers in riot gear. Um, and of course, pretty much taunted the fans. Because, you know, they're in Chicago and everybody knows the whole altercation between Jack Perry and CM Punk. So, 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this match was actually really good. Really good between both these guys. I know they've been at it back and forth recently, especially ever since Jack Perry first attacked um, Shota Umino. And then, of course, Jack Perry ended up joining House of Torture. And these two have just been back and forth, back and forth. But Jack Perry has had the best of Shota Umino. But this time would be different. They had a great match, but Shota Umino would be on the winning side this time as he was able to hit a blaze on Jack Perry, then follow up with a Death Rider, and then pin them for the 1-2-3. So Shota Umino with the victory. Now what I thought was really weird <clears throat> was afterwards... They actually shook hands. What the heck? They shook hands. What? And then even as Jack Perry was leaving, flipped off the crowd, and then even fist bumped and slapped hands with some of the fans. Like, what? That, that made no sense to me. That really made no sense to me. I thought he was going to attack Shota Umino after showing sportsmanship, but... Apparently it was legit. I don't know. Maybe y'all feel different, but I just, I, I thought that looked weird. I thought that looked weird because Jack Perry is supposed to be a heel. So, I don't know. That just looked really weird. But, it is what it is. Alright, next match. Alright, we had special singles match of... Hiromu Takahashi versus Mustafa Ali. Now, I thought it was pretty funny. Hiromu came to the ring with a really jacked up muscular Daryl. So I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, <clears throat> these two had a great match. Definitely enjoyed this match. Um, which I believe this was their first time going up against each other. And they looked good. They looked really good. I was not disappointed at all. Even Mustafa Ali got bloodied up a little bit. That I did not expect. But this was a good, solid match. It went about 15 minutes. I wish it could have went a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. But Mustafa Ali with the big victory, hitting that 450 splash on Hero Moon, pinned him for the 1-2-3. And even good sportsmanship afterwards. So I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, Mustafa Ali. I know a lot of folks have been saying that since he left WWE, his matches haven't been all that entertaining. I feel like they've been hit or miss. I mean, I really enjoyed how he went to war with Chris Saban and won the, <coughs> won the um, X Division title. Um... But I, I feel like it's, he's been kind of hit and miss, so I get it. But I feel like this one, this match was a hit. Felt like this match was a hit. But we'll see what happens. I mean, he's getting booked a lot, you know, on TNA as well as the Indies. So at least he's staying busy. Okay, our next match. was the big four-on-four -four Riot Rules match. No time limit. Riot Rules. Which is pretty much no DQs, anything goes, tornado style. So, the teams. Team Eddie Kingston ended up being the combination of Eddie Kingston... Jeff Cobb and TJP of United Empire and Homicide. And they took on Team Gabe Kidd, which had Clark Connors, Kenta, and David Finley. Now, of course, this was a wild match. I mean, we saw all sorts of weapons being used. Uh, chairs, barbed wire, 
I mean, forks, tables. I mean, we got to see a whole lot used in this match. And just all eight of these guys were just tearing each other up, especially Gabe Kidd and Eddie Kingston. Um, like I said, it's good to see Homicide back. So, thought that was cool. But yeah, both these teams went to war. But when it came down to it, Gabe Kidd was actually able to get the victory for his team, hitting Homicide with a pile driver, then pinning him for the 1-2-3. Everybody continued to fight afterwards. Um, and then at the end, Eddie Kingston challenged Gabe Kidd to a last man standing match, May 11th Resurgence. So we got that to look forward to. <clears throat> Gabe Kidd, Eddie Kingston, last man standing. Let's do it. Should be good. Should be really good. All right. Next up, another title match. We had the NJPW World Television Championship on the line. As the champion, Matt Riddle defended against Zack Sabre Jr. A great match. Great technical battle between both of these guys. Great map work, of course. But I gotta I gotta be honest with you. I wasn't that big of a fan of the of the outcome. So Zack Sabre Jr. was able to pin Matt Riddle with a crucifix to win back and become a two time television champion. <clears throat> Here's my thing. First off, TMDK. <coughs> Excuse me. First off, TMDK on a roll at this event with Shane Hayes, Mikey Nichols winning the strong open weight tag titles. Zack Sabre Jr. winning back the uh, the TV title. My thing is this: I don't think I really don't think Zack Sabre Jr. needed this title again. I really don't. I mean. He was the first holder of the title, held it for a whole year, and had 16 successful defenses. He didn't need this title again. He did not need this title again. Like, they need to be keeping him... <clears throat> they need to be keeping him in the top title picture. Let's just keep it real. So... Not to mention... I felt like Matt Riddle should have had it a little longer. I really do. But to lose it to Zack Sabre Jr., I just, I don't understand that move. I really don't understand that move. ZSJ does not need that title. He had it for a year and defended it 16 successful times. So, I don't know. Him winning just, just made no sense to me. So... It is what it is. But it was a great match. I will say that. It was a great match. All right. Next up. Had one more special singles match. We had the Stone Pit Bull Tomohiro Ishii taking on the NJPW, or excuse me, the IG, IWGP Global Heavyweight Champion, Nick Nemeth. Solid match. Great clash of styles between both of these uh, competitors. And a great challenge for Nick Nemeth. Definitely a great challenge. Tomohiro Ishii brought the pain, brought the power to Nick Nemeth. And it was a good, solid match. But it would have been nice if the title was on the line. But it's okay. It's totally fine. But Nick Nemeth was able to hit the danger zone, a.k.a. zigzag, and uh, pin Ishii for the 1-2-3. <clears throat> Great victory for Nick Nemeth. Like I said, Ishii is a tough opponent, but he looked good. Looked good in this match. But yeah, don't really have any complaints or anything like that, so 
This was a good solid match from start to finish. And then the main event of Windy City Riot comes down to this. The IWGP World Heavyweight Championship on the line as the champion Tetsuya Naito defended against John Moxley. And of course, these two went to war. Mox got bloodied up pretty badly as well. <clears throat> but, um, and of course, the last time these two faced each other, Naito beat. Moxley. But sure enough, after three Death Riders, John Moxley would make history. As after the third Death Rider, pin Naito for the one, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> not only is John Moxley your new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, but he becomes the first competitor to have won the WWE Championship, AEW Championship, and IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Three top titles in three different promotions. Big name promotions. And he makes history by doing that. So... Congratulations to John Moxley. Um, I know a lot of people are pretty disappointed as well because, I mean, Naito lost this title in his third defense. And we got to remember, he won this title at Wrestle Kingdom, defeating Sonata. So, I mean, I, I could see both sides of it. I could definitely see both sides of it, but as soon as they uh, made this a title match, I knew right then and there, yeah, Mox is probably going to win. So, not surprised at the outcome. Um, Ren Narita, after the match, attacked John Moxley, and of course Shota Umino came out for the save, and Ren Narita, Ren Narita wants a shot at the title. And even before that, when Moxley got on the mic, he announced that he wanted to give Shota Umino a title shot. So, looks like we got an idea of the next two defenses. It looks like we'll be Ren Narita and Shota Umino. So, we'll see what happens. Um, it looks like maybe Mox gets Ren Narita, perhaps at Resurgence. Or who knows, maybe Ren Narita and Shota Umino might compete one more time to see who becomes number one contender. I don't know. We'll see. But big victory for John Moxley and making history. But overall, pretty good show. Pretty good show. Um, my favorite match? That's tough, to be honest with you. Favorite match? Yeah, I don't know. That That's really tough. That's really, really tough. I mean, the Riot Rules match was pretty entertaining, so... I'd probably have to say that one. Yeah, I'd probably have to say that one. <clears throat> but... But yeah, um, pretty good show. And you know what? Let's let's do a quick look at the schedule, the upcoming schedule. So don't forget, um, tomorrow, Sunday, uh, the fourteenth, we got uh, Wrestling World twenty twenty four in Taiwan, which will showcase a little mini tournament to crown uh, new. Never open weight six man tag team champions, because um, remember those titles are vacant right now. So we got that. We got the the road to wrestling Dantaku starting on uh, Saturday, April twentieth. Uh, wrestling Satsuma no <coughs> no Kuni 
on April 29th. Um, and don't forget, we got the All Together show on uh, Monday, May 6th, which they're still um, making the card for that. But they just added uh, Keno versus Kosei Fujita. And they added Kai and Sonata versus Chris Brooks and Zack Sabre Jr. So that, that should be really good. Should be really, really good. Um, and they also got Yuki Ueno, Kaito Kiyomiya, and Shota Umino taking on Shun Skywalker, Kanosuke Takeshita, and Yuya Uemura. That should be very interesting. So yeah. But yeah, that's uh, May 6th, the All Together Show. <clears throat> uh, you got Resurgence, May 11th. And actually, the interesting thing is, not only does Resurgence fall on May 11th, but in Japan, on May 11th, is also the start of the Best of Super Juniors 31 tournament. So, wow, New Japan is going to be busy on that day. It'll be real busy. Um, and then you got Dominion on June 9th, which will also be the finals of the Best of Super Juniors tournament. Uh, El Desperado will be hosting an, end of, an invitational show uh, the following day, uh, June 10th at Corquin Hall. Um, which the word is that we won't know who's competing or whatnot until the day of. So, surprise card. Um, and then you got the New Japan Soul 2024 Tour, which starts uh, June 16th. And then, the G1 Climax 34 starts Saturday, July 20th. Saturday, July 20th, and that goes up to the finals, which is uh, August 18th. So, got a lot to look forward to for New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's exciting, very exciting. But, that'll do it for this video. Don't forget to check out Game Beauty. Happy shopping. And let me know what y'all's thoughts are. How do y'all feel about Jerry Nagano and her retirement? Um, you have any favorite matches, favorite moments of Jury and Nagano? And let me know what y'all thought about Windy City Riot. Did you enjoy the show? What were your favorite matches? Were your predictions correct? Let me know. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For another Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the YouTube of the Tube, my name is Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend, and I will see y'all in the next video and or live stream. Peace. Later.